Here we are in Barcelona, Spain, and uh, that was Cedar Walton, piano, Dave Williams, uh, bass, and Billy Higgins, drums, dusting those cymbals and being the complimentary team worker that he is. As a matter of fact, Cedar Walton is appearing in Minneapolis, Minnesota, as of this moment on the left bank of the Mississippi River at a place called the Roxy. And uh, while we're trying to contact Cedar Walton, I'd like you to sit back and listen to what he does and what he presents as a sort of loving care of the compositions of Thelonious Monk. <laughs> That's the work of one Cedar Walton and a theme called Off Minor. He's backed by his good compatriot and colleague, uh, Billy Higgins, with Dave Williams on bass, and the session was recorded in Bologna in March of 1985. In a moment, we'll return to that scene, but I'd like you to meet Cedar Walton in person. I've contacted him on the left bank of the Mississippi River at the Roxy in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And after we finish our conversation, you and I will go back to Bologna, and uh, Cedar Walton will go back on stage with Billy Higgins and uh, perform at the Roxy in Minneapolis. How's that for juggling time and space? Cedar Walton, welcome into Minnesota Public Radio. Uh, thank you. I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> well, Cedar, uh, you haven't been in this area for a long time, and it's uh, good to welcome you in. It's... Uh, I don't know how many years since you've been here. Well, just about a year and a half. I was over at uh, Dakota with uh, Timeless All-Stars uh, October of 90, I believe. It was. No, October of, uh, yeah, 90. That's right. Uh, and in that beautiful fall. Wait a minute. Was that 90? I'm, I'm getting confused. No, it had to be 89. I beg your pardon. Well, whenever it was, <laughs> it's just good to have you back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. You know, I uh, I wondered about this session that we're presenting now and programming, the scene in Bologna and what the occasion was. Well, uh, it was a concert uh, and a nice, uh, they have beautiful halls all throughout Italy, and it's amazing 
the acoustics in these places they were designed originally for uh, opera and uh they have used utilize them now for jazz concerts and uh all pop concerts all kind of concerts depending on the uh the artists uh, uh and uh, it's just uh, uh we have some uh, great friends we've developed uh, friendships in uh in Italy, especially specifically Bologna, a uh, gentleman there who uh, who did the engineering, uh, Johnny uh, Gracilli, I believe his name was Johnny. Yes, yes. Uh, a great friend of ours, and he uh, his idol of, uh, is uh, Rudy Van Gelder of the uh, Van Gelder Studios <laughs> yeah. in in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just had a lot of fun, and uh, we the, he uh, was able to get his equipment in there and tape that concert, uh, if I recall correctly. I'm pretty sure it was uh, that that series was live in Bologna, and uh, I was at a nice little concert hall. When I say little, it wasn't, uh, well, I, I would estimate about 1,200 seats as, as compared to 3,000, 3,000 or 4,000. And uh, we were on tour uh, of, of Europe, which usually includes a, a nice slice of the, of the tours that usually include uh, uh, a week or so in Italy. What impresses you about the Italian jazz fan? Well, uh, because I think the, the Italian, not only the Italian jazz fan, the Italian period is, uh, seems to have so much music in, in his bones, uh, his or her bones, uh, I, and I, I attribute it to the great background of operatic uh, um, excellence uh, that uh, has uh, permeated uh, their history. Uh, it's just a music, uh, and uh, jazz somehow uh, fits perfectly into that mold of, of their listening experience. Somehow, I, I, it's a phenomenal to me, uh, phenomenal to me how. It happens to fit their palate because a lot of people who attend the concerts uh, are not necessarily jazz fans, but uh, the, the, the music attracts them. It seems it's an interla- international language. It seems so, yes, because uh, everywhere we go, uh, our audience includes uh, Japan, uh, uh, all of Europe, Canada, you know, as well as this country, and uh, uh, occasionally South America. Well, in your programs, as you present them either overseas or here at home, there's a wonderful respect for standards, but there's also the care which you give all of the new composers in jazz and uh, some of our departed ones as well. And I was thinking of your Thelonious Monk set uh, last night uh, that was uh, just an excursion and a half. Uh-huh. What is it, uh, you know, that, that must be challenging to... Uh, to probe Monk's uh, music and all of its richness? Yes, I, I uh, get uh, an especial uh, thrill uh, of uh, trying to reproduce uh, Monk, and I take great care to interpret it uh, as he would have me uh, do it uh, in my own uh, way. Monk was a great champion of uh, individuality, and uh, I had a chance to meet him and be around him in my early days in New York. and. Uh, most of the things he said to me were uh, just play like you feel like, you know, to help with what anybody else thinks. Or, uh, you know, he very he was very encouraging in that light, and uh, he he's very friendly to all piano players. I, I noticed that, and uh, he was just a gentle, uh, one of the most beautiful human beings I ever met, and uh, quite a role model and and quite a, an inspiration. Always friendly and always warm, and I just loved his uh, compositions. I, I loved them before I met him, and then uh, to meet him and watch him oh, just enhanced my appreciation. What impressed you about his uh, his textures and his melodies? And uh... well, they they were so uh, uh, I guess it's just so 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 uh, uh, fantastically individual. They they didn't remind me of anybody else. Well, they did. If anybody had a slight Ellington uh, flavor, uh, if I just had to associate him with anybody else. But he was his own man, and that's what I think uh, impressed me the most. Well, as you work with your trio, which is a a, a static one as a rule, um, usually David Williams is with you, isn't he? But uh, on this occasion, you have a fine Milwaukee bassist in with you. Yes. uh, We were lucky to to get Gerald Cannon, who who uh, uh, has studied our repertoire, and uh, and to yeah. plug uh, plug in where David Williams ha- uh, left off. Yeah, definitely. So it was it was a great 
great uh, piece of luck to 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 get him. And uh, of course, that percussionist uh, Billy Higgins. Yes, uh, Mr. Higgins uh, asserts himself quite uh, appropriately in all situations. He's a piano player's dream. He plays with a great deal of delicacy, uh, and that simultaneously uh, 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 gives a great uh, touch of uh, intensity, which is, uh, I think, the key to his brilliance. All the color and dynamics in the world, and often I think he's talking to us, uh, (laughs) the dialogue, if that is. Yeah, that certainly is true. Answer and response. Exactly. Well, Cedar Walton, it's a pleasure to take time with you on your intermission at the Roxy, and it's so good to have you back in this area. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, talking to you, Lay. Well, Cedar Walton, I know you're due back on stand, and you know we're going to head over to Italy, and the rest of the folks are going to stay right there in Minneapolis on the left bank. Okay. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good luck.